Now, we're joined exclusively by Kyriakos Mitsotakis, the Prime Minister of Greece. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. I mean, it's been quite a week for you, I have to say, and the UK. The Prime Minister of the UK, uh, Rishi Sunak, cancelled the meeting with you, accused you of grandstanding and ruled out allowing some Pantheon uh, sculptures to leave the British Museum. You seem to have a cordial meeting with his opposition. Well, Francina, you know, in, in the spirit of uh, um, long-standing good relations our two countries have, and which I certainly intend to preserve, I don't have much to add um, uh, to this uh, topic, nor do I want to get um, um, embroiled in, in domestic um, uh, UK politics. I think we've said any, everything we have to say uh, about this issue, and I really don't want to comment more about it. Uh, have you spoken to the Prime Minister? Is it, do you feel like it's now behind you? Well, I would certainly want to leave this um, uh, unfortunate incident uh, uh, behind me, but it always takes two to tango. Have you spoken to him? No. Okay, maybe he'll get a call, maybe after this interview. Mm. Prime Minister, there's a lot to be done here at COP28. Are you confident that there's going to be something meaningful instead of just talk? Well, this is an important COP. It's a stock-taking um, uh, COP. I think there is uh, a very understandable concern uh, about the track uh, we are on and about uh, the gap between our um, uh, nationally defined contributions and where we need to get to. And coming from a country which uh, suffered uh, the devastating consequences of the climate crisis uh, this summer, I cannot just uh, but urge uh, everyone to, to be more ambitious in their goals. Uh, uh, Greece has done uh, its own uh, fair share of the heavy lifting. We have reduced our emissions by 43% uh, since 2005. That is the fastest reduction of emissions of any European country. Granted, we also had an economic uh, crisis to deal with, but we still remain fully uh, committed towards meeting our mitigation targets, but obviously we can't do it alone. I mean, you also have growth, which helps if yeah. you have money to spend on this. So yeah. uh, what kind of advice do you give? I mean, there are leaders here, and without maybe giving advice, like, mm -hmm. what's the biggest challenge right now to a leader that wants to do good, but that can't quite get there? Uh, well, listen, we have to set long-term targets and medium-term targets. I think um, decarbonizing our power sector is the obvious way to, to go in terms of increasing the penetration of uh, renewables. This is something we've done in Greece. We're a top 10 producer of renewables um, globally, and we intend to continue down that path. But we also need more investments in our grids in order to actually make uh, renewables um, uh, work. Uh, so this will be the number one priority. And then, of course, uh, you know, obvious energy savings, looking at our, at our houses uh, and how we can uh, uh, achieve quick wins uh, through positive NPV measures. Prime Minister, what do you worry about the most right here in Europe right now? There was a, a pretty shocking election in the Netherlands that not many people are expecting with, with the far right to win. Does this change also commitment to, to greening the economy? Um, well, look, uh, we are committed to the Fit for 55 agenda, uh, and uh, important legislative initiatives have been passed. Uh, at the same time, we need to listen to our people and understand that we cannot uh, uh, place more burden on the less privileged ones, uh, and that is why the total, uh, I'd say, rebalancing uh, of our fiscal approach, making sure that uh, we use the process of growth to support the more vulnerable households, uh, is uh, it's so important uh, in our case, and to make sure that uh, uh, a lot of people can actually tangibly benefit uh, from the green transition. For example, uh, in Greece, we have uh, an extensive penetration of thermal solar. You just heat our water using the solar energy, um, and it's a very cheap measure that helps reduce electricity bills. So make sure that we focus on those measures uh, where we can actually demonstrate to people that we take care of their concerns and we don't put unnecessary burden on them. But overall, do you worry that there's a tilt, that there's more d domestic uncertainty in a lot of big European uh, countries? Yeah, I'd say yes and, right. yes and no, but you look at other countries, you look at Poland, uh, you look at Greece, for example, reasonable, yeah. moderate, centre-right government. You got elected in the summer. Government yeah. with a strong majority, a very strong mandate to deliver growth, um, uh, growth rate uh, way higher than the Eurozone uh, average. These are all good signals. You can actually run a moderate centre-right government, um, uh, obtain a large majority, uh, as long as you continue to deliver benefits uh, for, uh, you know, for citizens. Do, do, do you worry, Prime Minister, and I'm, I'm talking a lot about worries because it sees that, the, you know, the economy overall, the world is not getting easier to deal with. We talk about onshoring, we talk, for example, about a lot of the green technologies coming back to the U.S., we talk about the rift between U.S. and China. If you look at these, these big issues, what do they mean for Europe? Well, um, Europe uh, has an important uh, uh, role to play in terms of covering out its own uh, agenda regarding its own strategic uh, uh, autonomy. 
Um, we are leaders in the climate change, but we can't do it alone. And certainly we don't want to put uh, uh, European businesses at a disadvantage compared to the US or to Chinese businesses. Look at shipping, for example. We want to decarbonize uh, shipping, but shipping is a global industry. And we want to make sure that uh, our shipping is not uh, uh, placed in a position where you just have uh, you know, uh, ship owners move their flags to other countries. But so how do you do that? Again, it's, it's extremely difficult. And if you look at shipping, I mean, it, it takes a huge amount of capital at a time where interest rates are high to either rebuild or actually repurpose a lot of these shipping. Yards. Well, you, you do it by offering the right incentives and by making sure that you spread the, you know, the, the burden equally on, on everyone. Not an easy exercise. Uh, you need to use technology um, um, uh, and to make sure that we're at the forefront of the technological innovation. But we certainly want to get to that point. Um, Prime Minister, Greek, uh, Greece is actually aiming to, to be an exporter of green energy to Central and Southeast Europe as more renewable power comes online. And at the same time, you're also looking at hydrocarbon exploration. How do you marry the two? Um, we need base low power. We need natural gas for the foreseeable future. But at the same time, we can significantly expand our uh, green production capacity, which is something we intend to do. We want to be an exporter um, of green power in the medium to long term. In the short term, we want to make sure that we cover uh, the requirements of our neighboring countries in terms of offering them access to natural gas, which is something that we do through significant investment in our infrastructure. So do you think you can help them meet some of their priorities? We, We are doing that already. We're doing that already um, by covering the needs of Bulgaria. We're exporting gas to Moldova. And we're building the necessary infrastructure to import gas um, uh, into uh, uh, into Europe uh, through northern Greece. So we want to be a provider of energy security uh, for many European countries. How long, Prime Minister, will it take to, for, for that infrastructure actually to be put in place? The FSRU um, is arriving in Alexandrupoli in a, in a month. So the first infrastructure is already in place. If there's one thing that you think COP leaders need to get right in the next two weeks, what is it? Uh, so, to make sure that uh, we ramp up our ambitions. What we're doing is not enough. We're paying the consequences, uh, and we need to send out a signal of, of extreme urgency out of out of this meeting. But this is what pledges on methane. What, are, are there concrete methane, pledges? Uh, uh, methane power, power production mm-hmm. uh, in, uh, in in the short term, and of course climate financing for those who need it the most. Prime Minister, thank you so much for joining us. That was Kyriakos Mitsotakis, the Prime Minister of Greece.